Hello everyone, Shazeb here and today we are going to discuss how we can develop a chatbot with the help of Langchain, QNet Vector Database and OpenAI. So if you have been following my channel, my channel is related to multiple type of NLP problems and nowadays I have been obsessed with large language models and Langchain and prompting with the help of that. Other than that, I have made multiple videos on how we can do long document search and as well as QA systems, right? So today the vector database that we are going to use is QDRAND vector database. I already have an account on here. So if you want to use QDRAND with the help of cloud, I would like you to go on to cloud.qdrand.io and make your own account. Of course, at the start, they give uh, you a head start of uh, one GB data. So it is good enough for you to understand how QDRENT works. You can also go on to github.com slash QDRENT slash QDRENT and uh, use QDRENT through here as well, right? Other than that, QDRENT is an open source vector database. And now let's move into our topic. So what are the first libraries that we are going to install to run this chatbot with the help of QDRENT? This uh, vector database is uh, available on cloud and it is a very good alternative of vector database such as Pinecone. I have used it myself and I really like it. Anyways, so let's get into the code. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to open up your collab and then install these libraries. The first one is TikToken, which is a library that is, uh, you know, developed by OpenAI. Other than that, we have Langchain, OpenAI, and to read the PDFs, I am going to use PyPDF2. So first install these libraries. I already have done that. After that, you also need to install QDRENT client. So for that, you need to write pip install QDRENT underscore client. Once you have done that, now you have all the libraries. You can now import the libraries that you are going to use. So these are all the libraries that we are going to import. The first one is we are going to read PDF with the help of PDF reader. We are going to use corrected text splitter to split our document into multiple chunks. Other than that, from Langchain, we are going to import QDRENT. Of course, for this video, I might not use it via Langchain, but I'll make a separate video for this as well. After that, I have imported OpenAI embeddings from langchain.embeddings and from QDRENT client. These are main differences from my last videos, which are these. Uh, from QDRENT client, we have to import QDRENT client and models. And from QDRENT client.http.models, we are going to import point struct. Again, we'll see when these things come up, what they mean and how they can be utilized. Other than that, we are going to import OS, OpenAI, and UUID for using unique IDs for each collection or each question. Okay, so at the end, I have entered my OpenAI API key. And with that, let's start with the code part. Okay, so right here, I have created a new cluster in QDRENT. So to create a new cluster in QDRENT, the first thing that you need to do is you need to write record is equal to zero and then you need to make a connection. So where does this code come from? You need to go to vector database QDRENT and after that you can uh, go to the access management part. Sorry, the data access part and here if you will create, you will get a new API key. Let me do that for you. If I click on Shazeb here and I click OK, then it will tell me if you want to create it or not. And we can select Python. That's what I did. And I copied it right here. OK. So after that, the next part is to uh, create or recreate connection. So I am recreating a connection because I already had a collection name with this. So I recreated it again and again. If you are doing it first time, then what you can do is you can write connection.create collection. And in this, you are going to write collection name. So if you, uh, you want to know what is collection name, it is basically 
multiple uh, you know sort of deviants within the same cluster right you can uh, look into uh, it in a way that if you have a website and you have multiple users then you can uh, use this collection name for different users i am already doing that for my product and you can do that as well after that we have to configure the vectors and the vector parameters are these that i have used size is 1536 and distance is models distance cosine right and then i am just printing out the collection connection response uh, and uh, for that we just have to print out connection okay after that we can also take out the information of connection by writing connection dot get collection and in this i have written collection name is equal to the same name that i have created before and then i can print out the information of the collection and let's see that's what i'm doing right here okay so when we print out the collection response we will get this part and when we print out the collection info we will get all the information of the collection so we can have multiple collections in the same cluster as i have told you before let's move on this was the part in which we are going to make a collection inside the quadrant okay so what is the next part the next part are a few functions that i am going to utilize again i have taken motivation for these functions from other videos as well and i have created these uh, by using some standard libraries that are already available okay so the first one is read data from pdf and the pdf that i am going to use is greedy dog which is available right here in my drive and i am opening it and then i am reading it and then i am saving the or returning the text right so if any one of you is not familiar with how pypdf works you can uh, look into it with more details but the main idea is right here we are reading uh, the pages from right here and after that for each page we are extracting the text and then returning the text okay so once we have the text what is the next part the next part is to make chunks of that text so for that we are going to use character text splitter and the separator that we are going to use in this is slash n right so for after each splitting we will have a slash n there other than that we will also give it a chunk size of 1000 so what this means is uh, it will uh, you know divide 1000 characters uh, per 1000 characters right if there are 10000 characters then it will divide it into 10 deviants right however there is another thing that you must take into account chunk overlap I have taken a decent size of chunk overlap which is 20% of the chunk size why am I doing that so that the information is not lost at the deviant of the chunks right so 200 characters will be the one which are in the chunk 1 and chunk 2 as well and then similarly between chunk 2 and chunk 3 there will be 200 characters that overlap so on and so forth okay so after doing this text splitter i am just splitting the text into chunks and returning those chunks so that is the second part or the second function after that what is the next part in the next part we have to make the embeddings right so for making the embeddings we are going to use the uh, ada model that is available via open a so if you want to use it you need to write text embedding ada 002 again this code will be available on github and if you want you can just download it and run it and check it out yourself so define get embeddings then we will input the text chunks here and the model here right so right here what we are doing is we are giving it ids and chunks so that each chunk has a different id right and for each id we are going to take the chunk and uh, uh, you know create its embeddings why how um, because we have the input as chunk and this as a model and in the response we will get the embeddings and to get the uh, out the embeddings we need to write response data zero embeddings 
so this is a fix uh, you know uh, line that we always have to use again i am not using lang chain for this and the next part for this video uh, for the next videos maybe i'll do that as well right okay so embeddings is equal to response that has zero embeddings we will have the embeddings right here and then i am generating different id for these embeddings right and after generating different uuid for these uh, you know points what i'm going to do is i am going to append them and write the chunk into the payload so what it will help us do is we will have the text as it is in the payload right and of course you can change it by uh, uh, you can uh, you know take these embeddings and answer qa with the help of these embeddings but for this video i am going to use this chunk for question answering which is the payload i will do the other one as well in the future okay so what am i doing here i am just calling out the point struct and id is this id this is the unique id for this point right or for this chunk you can say uh, we have this id right uh, whatever will come here and then its embeddings are st stored here and the chunk as it is is stored right here in the payload and then i am returning the points right so this is where embeddings are made and then stored right so let's move into the next part which is data insertion into the qdent database so here i am going to insert the data and the input is the get points right from here that we have right and operation info is the connection absurd function right and in this we have the connection collection name which is the same as before and we need to wait until the connection is made right and the points are equal to the get points so this will just insert all of the uh, chunk that we have into this right if there are multiple chunks then we will be able to get multiple chunks into it okay so now let's see the next part which is how to create answers and with respect to context according to the query that we have so for that i, I have created a function which is create answer with context again i'll repeat myself that i have taken motivation from other people as well for these things and however the part with qrent uh, was not available anywhere so that's why i decided to make this video okay so we are going to input query here and the response is uh, just uh, you know a, a creation of the embeddings with the help of the same add a function right and the search result is going to be the similar chatbot connection okay so this one right so now that we have made the connections the next part is we are just going to output context first right and then for result in research search we are going to uh, you know search out in the payload right we are going to search out in the payload what are the most relevant things that are available with respect to that after that in the complete prompt what we will have is the question and then we will write the query and then we will write the answer until now we do not have the answer right we only have the question and then uh, this is some basic printing and after that we are going to get the answer from that right so we are giving the prompt to gpt 3.5 turbo right right here and whatever the response will be will be given to completion and after that i am going to uh, return completion dot choices zero of message content so what is in this in this is the answer that we want right so let me repeat this function once again if it has any confusion the first thing that we are doing is we are making the connections uh, of the embeddings as well and then we are uh, going to tell it what are the uh, you know collection in which we are going to make the search result and then this is some basic printing and uh, development of prompt right and right here we are doing the answer configuration 
okay so after that i have made a main function in which i have called all of these functions one by one uh, the first one is uh, read data from pdf the second one is get text chunks the third one is get embeddings and then insert data and vectors are inserted into it the ones that we got here and then we have a question that is what was the dog name and then we have the answer which is getting uh, we are getting from create answer with context so now after we uh, we run this we'll get this thing so first thing we'll get the context right this one right and then we will get the uh, three search results from the uh, most relevant context that is available so we can change it if we want so these are the relevant search results that we got and after that uh, we get the question which is what was the dog name again it is a query so we have passed this question as a query here and then we will get that what was the dog name and then we will get the answer the dog's name was max so let's run it again so as you can see answer came at the end if you want uh, let me okay so let's just change the so as you can see it is saying here that at the bakery through the window he saw magnificent display of pies of all flavors so let's try this question i have not done it before so it will be a good moment for me as well so what did the dog see at the bakery or something like that right So first we'll have context with respect to that. Yeah, so the dog saw a shelf stacked baked blueberry pies. So um, it is more or less true that there were different types of pies that were available there. So as you can see, we have a good question answering based system uh, that we have developed with the help of QTrend, OpenAI and LangChain. So for more videos like this, keep watching my channel. Thank you very much.